Let's get right into it. Number 10. Fake Grill Marks Ever look at those perfect grill marks on your frozen burger and think, wow, that looks delicious. Those marks aren't from some master chef carefully grilling your food. They're from a machine called a rotary brander that stamps fake grill marks onto your food. Think of it like a giant rubber stamp, except instead of ink, it uses superheated metal to burn those perfect lines onto the meat. Most of this food has never seen an actual grill. It's cooked in massive industrial ovens, then gets the fake tattoos slapped on at the end. To sell the illusion, they add artificial smoke flavor. These fake marks actually trick your brain into thinking the food tastes better. Scientists have found that just seeing grill marks makes people rate food as more flavorful. Your brain sees those lines and goes, yep, that's definitely cooked over an open flame. Meanwhile, it was actually made by a machine that can stamp 2,000 burgers per hour. Some companies even use special dyes to make the grill marks darker and more appetizing, because apparently, regular fake grill marks weren't fake enough. This isn't just for cheap frozen food. Even some restaurants use these machines. Next time you're paying $30 for a grilled chicken breast, maybe ask how it got those perfectly spaced identical grill marks. If every patty in your frozen pack has the exact same pattern, it's not because they hired the world's most consistent grill master, it's because they're using a giant meat stamp. Number 9. The Fake Tan Salmon That beautiful pink color you see on farmed salmon is basically a spray tan for fish. Naturally, farmed salmon are gray, about as appetizing as a wet newspaper. But nobody wants to eat gray salmon, so fish farmers had to get creative. They add something called astaxanthin to the salmon's food. It's a pigment that turns the fish's flesh that appetizing rosy color. Wild salmon are naturally pink because they eat a diet rich in shrimp and krill that contain this same chemical. But farmed salmon eat pellets made from things like soybeans and chicken parts. Not exactly the diet of champions, so farmers have to add this coloring to make them look natural. It's it's like putting makeup on a fish. Farmers can actually choose what shade of pink they want their salmon to be. They use something called the Salmo fan. Think of it like those paint sample cards you get at the hardware store, but for fish flesh. Different markets prefer different shades. The Japanese market likes a really deep red, while Americans often prefer a more subtle, lighter pink. This artificial coloring can add up to 20% to the cost of raising salmon. You're paying extra for your salmon's fake tan. When one salmon farm tried selling its naturally gray salmon, sales tanked. And technically, this isn't even considered artificial coloring by the FDA. They call it a color-added feed ingredient. It's like when your friend says they're not wearing makeup, just a tinted moisturizer. Number 8. The Immortal Zombie Cherry Those bright red cherries sitting on top of your sundae are actually zombies. These maraschino cherries start life as normal pale cherries. Then they get stripped of their natural color and flavor in a chemical bath of sulfur dioxide and calcium chloride. This bleaches them completely white, like tiny ghost cherries. Then, these ghost cherries are soaked in corn syrup, artificial flavoring, and red dye number 40, the same dye used in chips and candy. It's like giving a cherry plastic surgery and a spray tan. The craziest part is these cherries are basically immortal. They can sit on a shelf for years with Without going bad because they're not really fruit anymore. They're more like cherry-shaped candy that's been through witness protection. And that almond flavor you taste? It's fake too. They add it back in because the original cherry flavor was killed in the bleaching process. It's like the auto-tune of the fruit world. The original maraschino cherries were soaked in maraschino liqueur, made from special Croatian cherries. They were fancy, expensive, and actually tasted like cherries. Then prohibition hit America, and someone decided to just make fake ones instead. And that's how we ended up with these zombie cherries that will probably outlive us all. Number 7. The Spice Rack Fake Out That ground paprika you bought last month has a good chance of containing more than just peppers. Some companies are mixing in everything from rice flour to straight-up brick dust. Actual ground-up bricks. Spices are expensive to produce but cheap to fake. It's a massive global problem. Studies found that about 25% of ground oregano isn't oregano at all. It's just random leaves, like olive or myrtle, ground up to look like the real thing. They're basically free and look similar enough. And turmeric, that bright yellow powder that's supposed to be super healthy? Some fraudulent suppliers add lead chromate to make it look more yellow. That's the same stuff used in industrial paint. Instead of getting health benefits, you could be slowly poisoning yourself. To get a hint if your spices are fake, put a spoonful in a glass of water. Pure spices usually float or sink somewhat consistently and dissolve slowly. If you see different parts floating and sinking, or a layer of sludge at the bottom, you might have a brick dust blend. This isn't just happening in sketchy back alleys. In 2021, a big spice company was busted for selling millions of dollars worth of 100% pure garlic powder 
that was actually 40% cornstarch and other fillers. The best way to be sure? Buy whole spices and grind them yourself. Number 6. Your Fresh Fish's Carbon Monoxide Bath You're at the supermarket, looking at that beautiful bright red tuna. It looks fresh enough to jump back in the ocean, but that tuna might be wearing makeup. Some fish suppliers use carbon monoxide treatment. They give the fish a gas bath that reacts with the myoglobin in the meat, locking in that fresh red color forever. That fish could be weeks old but still look like it was caught yesterday. Imagine putting makeup on a corpse. Usually, when fish goes bad, it turns brown or gray. That's nature's warning sign. But with CO-treated fish, you lose that sign. The fish could be crawling with bacteria or loaded with histamines, but it'll still look Instagram-worthy. Places like Japan, Canada, and the European Union have banned this practice. They'd rather their food look its age than lie to them. But in the U.S., it's totally legal and considered generally recognized as safe. You often can't tell if your fish has been CO-treated, as many suppliers don't have to label it. The treatment doesn't keep it fresh longer. It just makes it look fresh longer. It's like putting a fresh coat of paint on a rotting house. Real fresh tuna should be a deep red or burgundy, and it should gradually change color. If that tuna in the case is suspiciously cheap and has been bright, cherry red for days, something's up. Number 5. The plastic in your salt. So you're sitting at dinner, reaching for the salt shaker, thinking you're just adding some taste to your bland pasta, but you're also seasoning your food with tiny pieces of plastic. Scientists tested salt from all over the world and found that over 90% of table salt brands contain microplastics. We're talking about pieces so tiny you could fit hundreds of them on a grain of rice. And before you rush to your fancy Himalayan pink salt, bad news, that's got plastic in it too. Sea salt, however, is often the worst offender. We dump about 8 million tons of plastic into our oceans every year. That plastic breaks down into tiny pieces that end up in sea salt when the water evaporates. The average person eats about 2,000 pieces of microplastic just from salt every year. That's like eating a tiny Lego brick, piece by piece. Asian sea salts are particularly bad. One study found that Indonesian sea salt had the highest levels, with thousands of plastic particles per kilogram. Now you might be thinking, I'll just switch to rock salt from ancient underground deposits. Well, even rock salt isn't totally safe. These microscopic pieces of plastic are literally raining down from the sky. They've been found on Mount Everest and in the Mariana Trench. They are even found in newborn babies. We're literally born pre-seasoned with plastic. The scary the scariest part is nobody really knows what all this plastic is doing to our bodies long term. We're all part of a giant, uncontrolled experiment, and we're the lab rats. Number 4. The fire retardant in your soda. Your citrus soda might have a chemical in it that was patented as a flame retardant. It's called brominated vegetable oil, or BVO. Back in the 1930s, Soda companies had a problem. Their citrus flavoring kept floating to the top. So chemists added bromine to vegetable oil. Bromine is heavy, so it weighed the citrus oils down and kept them suspended in the drink. But then, scientists started noticing people who drank tons of these sodas were having memory loss, skin problems, and nerve issues. Bromine was building up in their bodies. It was replacing iodine in their systems, which can mess with your thyroid. One guy ended up in the hospital after drinking nothing but ruby red squirt for months. His skin turned red, he couldn't walk, and he was having memory problems. Doctors found his bromine levels were through the roof. The FDA knew about potential issues with BVO since the 1970s. They took it off their generally recognized as safe list, but instead of banning it, they let companies use it temporarily while they studied it more. That temporary permission lasted over 50 years. Finally, in late 2023, the FDA proposed a ban, giving companies until 2025 to phase it out. You could still be drinking it right now. Most big soda companies have already switched to other ingredients, but it's still out there. Number 3. The Orange Juice Flavor Packet You know how your grandma always says, they don't make things like they used to? When it comes to orange juice, she's actually right. That fresh squeezed orange juice you're drinking has probably been sitting in a giant tank for up to a year. To make it last that long, they suck all the oxygen out of it in a process called deaeration. It's like putting your orange juice in a space vacuum. But when they remove the oxygen, they also remove all the flavor. Your orange juice basically becomes orange-colored water, so they add something called flavor packs back in. These flavor packs are engineered in labs by the same flavor and fragrance companies that make perfumes. Your 100% natural orange juice is basically wearing orange perfume. This flavor-swapping trick doesn't have to appear on the ingredients list. They can just call it natural flavoring because, technically, these flavor chemicals came from oranges at some point. It's like if I took apart your car, stored the pieces for a year, put it back together, sprayed it with new car smell, and tried to sell it to you as 
fresh off the lot. Number two, the Frankenstein steak. Imagine you're at a restaurant, cutting into what looks like a perfect filet mignon. The texture feels right, the color looks perfect, but something's off. That's because what you're eating might actually be meat confetti glued together to look like a premium cut. This is meat glue, or as scientists call it, transglutaminase. This stuff is like super glue for meat, and it's way more common than you think. Food companies can take meat scraps that might otherwise end up in the garbage or pet food. They sprinkle this white powder over the scraps, press them together into a mold, let it set overnight, and a few hours later, you've got what looks like a premium cut of meat. Even professional chefs often can't tell the difference just by looking at it. The problem is, when you piece together different meat scraps, you're creating a bacterial playground. All those surfaces that were exposed to air and bacteria are now trapped inside your new steak. So while the outside might get cooked to a safe temperature, the inside could still be hosting a microscopic party you definitely don't want to attend. Restaurants and food companies don't have to tell you they're using it. The FDA considers it generally recognized as safe or grass that's the same category as salt and pepper but unlike salt and pepper this stuff can turn meat scraps worth a few bucks into a 30 dollar steak number one what's really in your bread you know that soft fluffy texture in commercial bread there's something they're not telling you about how they get it that way it's an additive called l-cysteine and traditionally one of the cheapest and most common sources for this additive has been Human hair. Yes, human hair. Commercial bakeries use this stuff to condition their dough, making it softer and easier to work with in their industrial machines. It breaks down the gluten, speeding up processing time and making the bread fluffier. Want to know where they get all this human hair? Mostly from hair salons and barbershops in China. Those clippings from someone's haircut could have ended up in dough for a sandwich. When they couldn't get enough human hair, they turned to duck feathers and pig bristles. Now food companies will tell you it's safe. The hair and feathers are heated and processed with acid until it's just the pure chemical compound. But they don't have to tell you where it comes from on the label. It just shows up as L-cysteine, or dough conditioner. It's not just in bread. This stuff is in bagels, pizza dough, and pastries. Basically anything made with commercial dough. Because of the EU factor, many companies are now switching to synthetic or microbial versions, but those are more expensive. So, while it's less common in the West today, the hair-derived version is absolutely still used. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.